All right. This is one of those pieces that you look at the print and you say, yeah, no problem. And then you realize how small that is. And you go, well, it's uh, still no problem. But the problem is crushing it if you're trying to hold it. Or holding it and smashing one end versus the other. And this particular 3 16th square brass requires another couple of components. And that would be these guys here. This is a linkage. So there's a thread on either side of this particular linkage. And tongue and a groove and a cross pin in a radius. And this part gets pretty small. It's actually made out of this material right here. So when it's done, it's going to be about that big. So you can see how holding it is going to be an issue. So I figured we're going to start this job in a very creative fashion. And we're going to go to the lathe first. Now in order to hold a part like this on a, on a lathe, you can do it in an extremely small four jaw chuck if you have one. You could make a split collar to go around this. Uh, or you could figure out what the diagonal is here and hold it in a round collet. Now this is about 265 across and that translates to 17 64ths imperial. Problem with that is the splits in the collet are wide enough that it interferes with at least one leg of this part. So using a round collet, a commercial round collet, is a little difficult as the parts get smaller. The splits in the collet just don't allow for it. So I'm going to make an adapter. I am going to make a square inserted adapter for a round collet so I can use a conventional size collet and hold this material with a great deal of integrity for however I feel to position it. And this little guy here will probably start in the mill and get finished off in the lathe just because it's easier to face it off than it is to position it and square it up and squeeze it not crush that particular hole right there. Alright, let's make a square adapter for this over on my lathe. Okay, starting off with half inch diameter stock, I'm going to turn it down to 3 eighths of an inch and I'm going to leave this half inch. I'm going to turn it 3 eighths by about 700. I think that should be sufficient for what I'm doing. 3 eighths by 700. I'm going to do it to both ends. That will be more than obvious why momentarily. Stick around. Make sure we have a nice square corner in that. Okay, let's hit the mill. I currently have this part sitting in a 5C spin indexer. In my vise. 5C collet, half inch collet locked off and I will take that handle off because the last thing I want to do is accidentally open the vise and discharge this setup. I'm going to side mill this end, actually both ends of this slug, to exactly half of the diameter that I've put on here. Mine is 375 but that's arbitrary. You could use any diameter you want so long as it's bigger than the calculated diagonal cord of whatever square you're going to cut. So I'm going to cut that in half and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, not 45, not yet. Here we go. You want to see exactly half of this stock right now. 50%. Whatever it is, exactly half. To me, that would be 187 and a half. And we're at 34 and a half.
Once you have your blank cut exactly in half, we're going to rotate this piece 90 degrees so that flat is facing up. And we're going to bring the tool down and we're going to register the tool on that face and set 0, 0. So right now, whatever your y-axis reading is, 0 your digital, 0 your dial, you want to know right where this face is in relationship to that cutter. We're going to flip it. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom. I want the bottom of that cutter right on this plane. This is a setup step. This is a 2000 shim stock. Coming up with the table. Okay, I like it. Get off the port. Once you have the tool established to the zero plane, you want to drop the tool exactly half of the square that you want to hold. I'm looking to hold a 188 square. I'm going to drop the cutter 94. Now we rotate the part 45 degrees. The bottom of the cutter is now set. You want to come back 94 past the zero mark where you created the large flat. Okay, let's take it out, take a look. Okay, I think you can see where we're going with this. I'm going to do exactly the same thing to this side. So we're going to have two identical pieces. The only difference to this side is once I've established my vertical halfway mark and made my 45 degree cut, I will return the part to the vertical zero center line and remove another five thousandths of an inch off of these two surfaces straight down. That will give me the ability to go close up. It'll make sense. So I'm not going to do that on film. You've already seen this. So when I get to the point where it's going to do something different, I'll be back. Stay tuned. Alright, this is what you're going to have when you're done. Looks like some kind of router bit or something. These parts are basically identical, with the exception of one of these faces is ten thousandths beyond centerline. from the other one. Let's take it over to lathe, chop it off, and see if it works. I am going to visually align the inside of the parting tool, this side, with the shoulder on the part. I'm going to move in about sixty thousandths of an inch and I'm going to part that off. Needless to say, huge safety warning right here. This interrupted cut like this and this half feature of the part is incredibly dangerous. Do not put any body part near this thing while it is spinning. It will hurt you quickly and without conscience. So the other side.
Okay, let's take a smaller collet in there. We're going to go for the 3 8 collet that the diameter was originally turned to. Let's take a look at how it works. Alright, for the first operation here, I am going to put this short of the front. I am not going to go all the way to the front. And I put the shoulder on here so that when you install it, collar doesn't slide down inside the collar. Let's clean it up. Alright, the test cut on the end is the proof in the pudding. That is a beautiful thing right there. That is incredibly close. Visually perfect. I'd like to take and sit it on a surface plate and drop indicator, but it's not that critical. There's your square collar. You can see why it's important to have one side cut a little deeper than the other side. It gives you the crush zone for any deviation in your stock. Look at that. Like a Hollywood depth of field change. Wow, I'm getting better at this. Now I will start the first half of these particular links on the mill and I will hold it exactly the same way. I'll make sure that I do the end while I have a lot of material to hold. I am not going to cut this off to the required 3 8 length. When the time comes, I'm going to spin it around, I'm going to feed it into the collet a given amount. I will park this off and then I can drill and tap this without any worry as to alignment or crushing anything. Holding across the diagonals like that is going to really help out. There you go, square bushing. And if you have any questions about how that was done, by all means put it in the comment line. Great thing to have in your arsenal. And if you choose not to do it this way for your build, by all means at least you got to see how it's done. Having the part perfectly in half in the beginning is a great way to set your tools. No guesswork involved. Everything ends up quite nice. Alright, let's make the other pieces. Alright, this is the part that I feel like making first. It is the male side of the linkage hinge. I'm going to take some liberties with some of these dimensions because they have exact 094 and 195 on both mating surfaces here. So if you were to stretch the tolerances, which is usually a plus or minus 5 on a three-place decimal, there could be some bind going on here. So we're going to open these up. I'm going to stick to the 094 and 190, probably go to 200 on this side. I will hit the 094 on this side 
and I will take that 195 to 200 as well so they both clear. As is, you have a, a huge potential for pinch and I don't want to see that happen. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could do this in device laying down, flip the part over, set your height, just go back and forth. But it's nice to be able to access both sides of a feature at the same time when you're doing it. I could do this in the indexer and use the square collet that I just made, but that would involve indicating this piece flat beforehand. So let's take a look at this setup that I'm going to use. I have my outrigger stop set. And we're going to go with three, one, two, three blocks. One against the back jaw. flat and one right there okay so what does that do well that allows me to use the bottom one two three block I'll remove this so you can see it pull back a little bit this allows me to use the bottom one two three block as the location device I can push on that to set this vertical against this surface. Can you see it? I hope so. So now we have a vertical reference. Now we need to clamp it. That's where this one comes in. So while you're holding it against, close the vise. There you go. The bottom one is still free to move because the stack height of the part and the upper one, two, three block is greater than the bottom. So there you go, you have a vertical reference and a compression surface and you can mill both sides of this at the same time. I'm going to deck it, I'm going to take half and half until I have that 093 tab and I'm going to go 200 deep with it. I won't worry about the hole at another time. That is easy to do. This is the one that I wanted to do if I could get both sides. Let's cut it. Okay, now a quick lesson for you. This is a 312 end mill I'm using. 312 across, 5 sixteenths. When I was registering against the back surface, as soon as I saw the dust come off of this piece of brass, I zeroed my digital readout. Once I made my first cut, knowing how deep the first cut was, as I was coming across, when I got to 156, which is the number which would be half of the cutter right here, when I got the 156, I zeroed the incremental mode of the DRO and then returned to the absolute so I could come across and cut the other side of this part. That gave me the center line of this cutter against the back edge. The next operation, when I rotate this part 190 degrees and lay it down, all I need to do is move in 94 thousandths and I will be on center of this tab for the drilling of that hole. It'll make sense in a second. Let's change the cutter out and do the slot on the mating part. See how that works out. 3 30 seconds, 4 flute carbide end mill. 
This is the same one I used to do the ports and the bottom of the cylinder with. So we're going to cut that boss off the top which was the proof boss for the square adapter that I just built. And as soon as I have a zero I am going to go down 200 from there and put a slot in the center of this. The slot's got to be about three to four thousandths larger than the tab on the other side of this bar so that there's freedom of movement. I'm going to shoot for three. This is an 093 cutter. If I creep through it nice and easy, it should not flex and blow the slot. Let's do it. Okay, this is the perfect time to illustrate when I zeroed out the cutter with the 156 offset. When I return to zero, I am truly on zero right now with the center of the 330 seconds cutter as well. All I need to do is move over 94 and zero out my Y axis and I'll be right on center of this part. I'm going to zero out my Z axis right now because I have two flanges on the outside that are cut to height. I'm going to go 200 deep, a little at a time. six wide three thou worth of clearance on that let's lay it down put the hole in it is a very simple setup for the remaining operations on these parts and since the part is symmetrical end-to-end -end and still attached to the block I will lay it in here bank it up against that part right there drop in a pressure pad and when I close the pressure pad, I can remove the parallel so that I can drill through the part. This is a really good setup because I can use the edge finder against the stop and against the back jaw with the part out. So as soon as I zero this face and the back jaw face, I'll make my 094 offset in both directions and we'll get with the holes. Let's do it. All right, we are set and ready to go. And simply flip the setup around for the other side. tongue side of this particular small assembly is going to be the press fit for the pin. If you put the press fit in the fork as you press the pin in, you risk closing the fork and pinching the tongue part. So I always put the press fit in the center. It's not the way it's called out in the drawings, but it is the safer option. While this is still set up, I'm going to use one of these two drills, put a 1 16th dowel pin in a piece of plate, and I'm going to spin around on both of these so that they function as intended. Stay tuned. 
this particular setup is going to raise a few eyebrows, but uh, my fingers are fairly confident. I've been doing this a long time, and I know exactly what to look for. I am going to spin this thing by hand, registered against that end mill, and put the round on the end of this part. I drill the hole in the aluminum plate. I put the drill that I drilled the hole in the aluminum plate in there as the pin. It is the same drill that that clevis was drilled with. I am not going to drill this or buzz this in such a fashion that if I let go it sucks into the flute. I am going to work against the cut which means I am going to be pushing it this way. While the cutter is spinning clockwise I will spin this clockwise as well. If I were to spin this counterclockwise it would have a tendency to grab. So be careful. I wouldn't suggest doing this. Do this with a radius cutter but I figured I'd be honest enough to show you how I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Hope for the best. Do the exact same thing for the other side. Let's do it. Yeah, let's clean them up, cut them off, see if they fit. That would be nice. Here we go. Back in the square collet, we're going to part them off a little bit longer than they should be. Then I can reverse them in the square collet and finish off the length and tap the back side without having to worry about crushing anything. Let's cut them both. Alright, here's the assembly almost done. Got to put the 540 link holes in there. That is all she wrote right there. A little extra depth on the features will give you that clearance that you can see in the center. And like I had said on the mill, if you have to have one of these that's a press fit, Make it the center one. From experience, I have learned that if you make it one of the two outside ones, as you press it in, they will close up and they will pinch. And when the pin comes out the other side, it's trapped and you're just fighting an uphill battle trying to get it to release. 
So make the press fit the center one. That also gives you a little bit of the outside as a guide to get the pin to go in straight. But I'd say that's a win. Two extremely small pieces, one little assembly, out of the way. Alright guys, a quick closing look at the three components made in this video. One of them I did not show because it's just too simple. Once you've got these guys all slotted and drilled, put the piece of material back in the square adapter that you made, probably, and face off a piece of the remaining material to 3 8 long. Put it back in the exact same setup that you used to drill these. Shift over to 188 as opposed to 094, 095. Tap a 540 hole through the center. This is just too easy. I believe that you are now done. With the 316 square brass. There you go. Three more down. Stay tuned.